What's going on everyone? We are headed down to ECC Tuned down in Round Rock, Texas. We are going to get a baseline dyno for the 640 and just see what she makes bone stock. Um, obviously, I mean, we have the BMS intake, we have a charge pipe and a front mount intercooler. So, um, but nothing that's really a power adder. So this is pretty much as stock as stock gets. Um, we saw the factory downpipe on there, full exhaust, um, and so, and the factory turbo. So there's nothing else um, on this car right now that would change the performance from the factory. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go ahead and run a couple of uh, dyno sessions with the uh, car in its stock format. And then I'm going to go ahead and flash. There's two flashes that boot mode gives you for free. So I'm going to go ahead and flash those and then just see what those give us um, on a factory, um, you know, setup. And then we'll go ahead and do the stage one for 93. All these will be on 93. Um, so we have a baseline of just like what the car gets with pump gas, like bare minimum. And we'll uh, see what we get. And then from there, we will go home and I will install a downpipe that is catless and I will work on putting the in-house performance front intake on as well. Um, I have not put one on this chassis yet and I know it takes some finagling so I'm going to attempt to do that and then um, that's about it. I also want to know what the OTS stage one, stage two, and stage two plus does with just the stock high pressure fuel pump. So um, that's the plan going forward and we'll see how it works out. So let's get over to ECC and their dyno and uh CC tuned and for some reason my stock flash has failed. I can't get back to my stock flash. Um, I think it's an issue on my end. I didn't download it correctly. Um, so it says the flash worked but coding did not work. So um, I'm gonna flash the stage zero MPPK and we're just gonna use that as a baseline. Okay, so we got the MPPK flash successful. So that's good. Now we're going to go ahead and get this thing going on the dyno. All right, so we got the car on the dyno. We got the MPPK tune flash on it. I don't know what happened with the stock tune, but who cares? And PPK is the 326, so uh, we'll see what that does to the wheel, and then we'll go up from there. All right, so after the normal computer bullshit, everything's always gives you a problem when you have a dyno day. Finally got this figured out, so we're flashing the stage one 93 tune now. So first one came out, 300 horsepower, it's not up there anymore. So we're gonna go ahead and get this flashed and then we'll see what this one does. I'm guessing this is probably gonna do like 320. Um, I haven't taken a log with this one yet, but we'll figure it out.
40. That's not bad. All right, so we just got done doing the dyno session at ECC Tune. Um, those guys are awesome. They helped me out a bunch. And uh, we'll definitely be going back there. They'll be seeing me a lot. I'm going to be a frequent customer with all the dynoing that I have ahead of me. So that's uh, that's cool to you know be able to work with people that are as cool as they are. Um, go check them out, ECC Tune, if you're in the Austin, Texas area. They're up in Round Rock. Um, good people, good experience, and uh, highly recommended. So, yeah. The car did 300 on the MPPK tune. So it technically says 326, but it did 300 wheel, which is expected um, with some drivetrain loss. And car did with the stage one 93 tune on BM3, did 341 wheel horsepower, which isn't bad. 340 is still a pretty respectable number for being a stage one tune. I still have the factory cat on here and full exhaust. So um, yeah, that's I think that's pretty impressive. I don't know if what you guys think, but that's a free tune with your BM3 license. So when you purchase BM3, you get the M2 tune, you get the MPPK, and then those two are free. And then you get one more free one. You can pick whatever it is. I picked the stage 193 um, just because I don't have a downpipe on the car right now. So I'm gonna go home and we're gonna do some 60 to 130s and a couple zero to 60s once the temperature cools down and we get into the early hours of the evening and uh, get some data on that. And then we'll kind of take it from there. I think I have time this week in my work week to I have my downpipe that I got to do some fabrication work to. Um, it's the downpipe that I use for my three and a half inch exhaust. Um, I'm not going to do that on this car. Obviously, it's not necessary. So we're going to go ahead and um, do some fabrication and bring it back down to the, th I think it's a three inch collector at the bottom. So I got to do some work there. Um, I'm going to install, man, this thing. I'm, I'm sorry for 350 horsepower for it it moves pretty good it's impressive so, uh, yeah so like I was saying modifications to the downpipe to get it to fit and then I'm gonna install the ethanol analyzer from uh, fuel it and I'm still trying to figure out a few other things I'm pretty sure I need to put meth on this car, obviously. Uh, I don't want to have to deal with being heat soaked on the dyno. Um, we can easily take care of that with meth. So I think that's going to be my next priority. Uh, having the water meth injection on the charge pipe is crucial to running in. Uh, obviously, I've picked to do this. I'm an idiot. Every time I choose to build my car or do modifications or work on something, it's during the summer. I'm not in Arizona anymore, so it's not as bad, but it's still pretty bad. Like it's not, it's by no means cool weather. I mean, compared to Arizona, I mean like we only are seeing 95 right now when everybody else in Arizona is seeing 113, 115. So um, did you hear that? I, I think you heard something that you don't normally hear in BMWs. It's called a turn signal. So, um, so yeah, I, I always choose the summers, but anyways, so I don't want to deal with being heat soaked on the dyno. Um, these cars are very finicky on the dyno. This car and even my 535 hated going into roller mode. That thing always gave me a problem. And so we'd have to turn the car off, clear the codes, put it back into roller mode, start the car, get it going, and then hope everything works. But yeah, I always choose the summer to work on cars like an idiot, so it is what it is. I guess I like to suffer. Not only do I like, you know, bigger cars and heavier cars that make, uh, that require more power to make, you know, the numbers that we want to see, but uh, I want to do it in the middle of summer. So good on me. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what I got going on right now. So we'll get this thing back in the garage. Um, we got the big brake kit coming. Uh, 
I ordered the parts I need to do the big brake kit. So uh, show you guys what the brackets look like, the install process, and how easy it is. Um, it's super easy and for the performance you get and the looks. I mean, like most of the time, you know, big brake kits, most people don't need them. Um, obviously, when you start putting in power, you want to be able to stop. The five and six series brakes are garbage. I, in my last car, before I did the big brake kit, the reason why I designed the big brake kit bracket kit in that whole system was because I would take my car on canyon runs and I would get brake fade. I even had the RBF 600 and 660 in the car and with new upgraded pads and rotors and with the factory calipers, they just, they get brake fade real bad. But I hate the limitations that the, you know, that, are, that come with the M series. So putting M5 brakes on it, I hate the limitations of colors and having to buy used stuff. You buy everything used, it's pretty close depending on how much you spend and what you, what you get. Um, which, you know, calipers and how much somebody's selling them for on eBay or wherever you get them from. So it ends up being pretty close, but then you're getting a brand new set of calipers, a brand new set of rotors. You're not worried about anything warped or needing to be rebuilt or seals being bad or whatever. And then if you want them powder coated or painted, you can get them painted afterwards, but at least you're doing it with a clean set of calipers and you're not dealing with an old used set of calipers. You can, you know, real easily paint them. Um, or just get them powder coated since they're fresh, there's no oil in them. Send them out, get them powder coated, whatever color you want, and uh, you're good to go. We're, uh, we're, we're getting it going, we're getting dialed here. So I'm um, excited to uh, keep this going. Uh, it's pretty fun, I'm enjoying this car. Man, this car is, is, is a joy to drive. I, I miss driving the 535, so it definitely feels like that. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to be back in a car again. All right, so there's the zero to 60. Um, the advertised zero to 60 on this car is 5.4. Obviously that's in like optimal conditions, launch control, all the things. I brake boosted the car. So it's about what it does on factory. So we got a 5.7 on a zero 60 stock. And then the 60 to 130, I'm not gonna post a video. It's comical. Um, I need an airstrip to do it and I live in hill country so to find a straightaway that doesn't have a downhill or an uphill that's significant, good luck. So as those numbers start to come down, I'll be able to really compare on those times. So uh, yeah, the 60 to 130 was like, I'm, jo I'm not joking, like in the mid 16s with a downhill. So yeah, that's where we're at with the 0 to 60 and the 60 to 130s. Keep that tab going. After our dyno day, uh, we obviously brought the car back into the garage, kind of got started on a few things. Um, one, we got the big brake kit on. So this is all on, ready to go. Just got to bleed the brakes. It's ready to go. We've also been working on an intake. Um, like I said, putting the in-house performance intake on here. Not sure I'm going to do front mount. I think I'm just going to do simple and behind the headlights so I don't have to cut out a bunch of the plastic. But um, I've checked it, I can do the front mount, it's just a real pain in the butt. So we got that going. Um, I'm also coming up with a new design for the boost tube, the tube that goes from your turbo to your intercooler. Um, the only ones that I've been able to find are the FTP uh, pipes, and they're a real pain in the butt. They obviously come with two metal pieces that need to be joined by a union that is a silicone two and a half inch piece. But the problem is, is that what makes a factory one so easy to install is the slinky effect that you get. So obviously trying to put a tube onto the turbo and then push up uh, some kind of, you know, union, silicone union, put the tube on the bottom and then sliding it down. It sounds easy, but it's a little bit difficult. You take too much time, the soapy water dries, it becomes a problem. Um, it's just kind of a pain in the ass. So I'm working on a new design that makes it super easy to install and should only require you cutting off uh, one piece and adding a piece that I'm going to be making. So um, we'll see how that turns out. Um, all of this to make everything work and uh, get this thing back on the road. So it's been in the garage and on jack stands for about you know a week and a half now. So yeah, that's going to be the next thing we got going on. Hopefully we'll get it running this week before the 4th of July 
and we'll put it on a stage two. I'll actually take it, I think, to ECC. And what I wanna do, because I've had a lot of requests for this, is I want to, with the downpipe now put on it, the full exhaust, um, we did the muffler delete and my three and a half inch downpipe with the cat delete. So now that we have all that done, uh, I want to put it back on the dyno on the stage one and see how much horsepower we gained. Um, I'm guessing we're going to gain 15 to 20 horsepower, um, but we want to check and see what that is. Be cool to have that as a data point. And then we'll go ahead and switch it to the stage two and see what the stage two gives us. And this is all still with the stock turbo. We haven't put the Pure 500 on yet. So that's what I think I'm going to do moving forward once we get this all situated and get this all fabricated and done. And then we'll do that. So. That's where we're at with the car right now. So we got the dyno all done for the first baseline. A point I wanted to highlight about after the dyno session and me not being able to do it on full stock. This car, the 640i, comes with a high output version of the M55. So they um, advertise it at 315 horsepower. So the MPPK is advertised at 326 horsepower. So it's only about a 10 horsepower, crank horsepower difference. So obviously when we went on the dyno and we got that 300 horsepower, um, it's pretty close to what this car is gonna be making. So I don't think that we've skewed the data too far. So um, I know it's not that big of a deal, but I just like to be as accurate as possible when it comes to collecting data. So um, I think we're pretty close. So thanks for joining this episode. Hit like, hit subscribe. Um, we're gonna keep this thing going. I tried to knock out two this week. I was successful. Wait till the last day on Sunday to post this one. But um, yeah, we got this thing going and ripping. Uh, we are a pure turbos dealer. We are a door dealer. I am working on putting together an M55 package um, that allows you to get all the things you need to just slap on your car and make horsepower. So um, stay tuned for that. Big break kit is on sale right now and we're gonna be doing a 4th of July sale this week. We're gonna be doing up to 20% off of some of our products on the website, so keep an eye out on that. So yeah, I'm sure you guys will hear from me before the 4th of July, but have a good start to your week and uh, we'll catch you guys soon. Take it easy.